Welcome to my second GTA 5 mission analysis video. This time I'm going to cover the first set of Franklin missions, starting with Franklin and Lamar and ending in complications. My original plan was one video per mission, but GTA 6 is right around the corner, so I decided to group the missions up. Then again, I actually have way more time than I thought I did, but whatever, I'm combining them because it just makes sense. These missions are all about getting to know Franklin, who's the first protagonist you control once you get to Los Santos. And unfortunately, I don't think Rockstar does a good job at all of introducing Franklin. We first meet him and Lamar outside of Michael's therapist's office as they are off to repossess a couple of sports cars for Simeon. This mission is Franklin and Lamar and serves as the tutorial for Franklin's special ability, cop chases, and the art of crashing like 40 times and still barely losing a race. Then we get the repossession mission, which has a nice shootout between Franklin, Lamar, and the Vagos, and results in Franklin getting a new motorcycle. Pulling favors is a Strangers and Freaks mission, but this one is required, and it shows Franklin wanting to pull away from his roots and his old friends, all while essentially just pulling cars around in this much maligned side activity. Chop introduces you to Chop, and reintroduces the conflict between the Grove Street families and Ballas from San Andreas, with Franklin, Lamar, and Chop chasing this Bala through a train yard to kidnap him for money, all while dealing with the dumbest example of the character switching mechanic in the game. And then Complications has Franklin meeting Michael when he tries to repossess Michael's son's car for Simeon, while Michael sleeps in the backseat. And that mission ends with you taking control of Michael for the first time in Los Santos. Now I'll talk about the characters in a bit, but first I want to talk about the actual missions, which are a bit of a mixed bag. Though, it's a mixed bag that does some solid work at highlighting the changes Rockstar has made compared to earlier GTA games. Those games ease you in slowly into the city with not much in the way of vehicular mayhem in their first missions, but GTA 5's first Los Santos mission, Franklin and Lamar, has those two characters tearing through a large swath of the city in sports cars. And with that, there's tons of moving obstacles, a section where the game seems to want you to slam into pedestrians, and lots of high energy banter between Franklin and Lamar over the cell phone. Woo! You wanna get whips like this? You gotta stay on your grid now! Do some time over nickels and dimes? I stick to repos, dog. I think Rockstar did a great job of showing the player what pace they were going for with this mission. I mean, essentially, they're saying this game is absolutely not GTA 4. You see huge portions of Los Santos flying by at breakneck speeds, and being a street race, it's pretty chaotic. And it's a far cry from the moody and slow drive from the Liberty City docks to Roman's apartment in GTA 4. And even with the fast pace, Franklin and Lamar find a bit of time to delve into some light character work. Hey, remember we gotta be careful with these rides, homie. The Simeon ain't about to dock my pay again. Homie, man, if you need some bread, I can hook you up with JB's tow truck. It ain't... It's got grammar, but it's some money to be made. So him and Tanya can smoke crack in peace? Oh, I'm good. Really, Franklin? You're good with this? I'm not good with this. I hate how your special ability drowns out the sound and fragments the conversations. And that gets to some of the flaws with this mission. As good as it is at setting the vibes that Rockstar was going for, I think it's a bit much for your first drive in Los Santos. Part of what works with earlier GTAs is that those early missions feel like they're limiting you to a smaller part of the world, so you're slowly uncovering the map mission by mission. In Franklin and Lamar, you see so much so quickly that even after the race is over and you're driving to Franklin's home in Strawberry, it never really feels to me like I had a home base on this map. Also, the banter between Franklin and Lamar in this mission is funny if you can actually hear it. You look dick, you like them little cars. See, I heard the talk, homie. You being everywhere except where it counts. I think the audio levels are fine, but how many of you are actually able to pay attention to this dialogue in between using Franklin's special ability repeatedly and the amount of times you slam into obstacles? Plus, all those crashes really highlight the egregious rubber banding in this mission, which always sours me during video game races. But back to the positives, I like that the street race draws the cops' attention and that you have to get rid of your two-star wanted level as a part of the tutorial. Other GTA games kind of teach you about the wanted system in the open world, but I think it's a smart move to introduce it in mission in GTA 5. Plus, we get this hilarious line from Lamar. What you going slow up the road for, dog? Move over so the traffic can flow through. Whatever, n I'll let something flow through your ass. Dog, I ain't too sure that joke works, dog. Oh, shit. And that snappy dialogue is in top form this mission, culminating in this bit. What's up, can a low come up in your crib? Man, f you, I see you at work. Oh, hate me because I'm beautiful. Maybe if you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Tanisha will call your dog ass if she ever stop that brain surgeon, the lawyer she with. What? 
The mission repossession continues to change things up from prior GTAs with an emphasis on getting you into the action quickly. We already had that bombastic shootout in the prologue and we get another one here. This one is grittier and smaller scale, but it's still entertaining. And is it really smaller scale? Yeah, it takes place in an alley, but we still get explosions and it ends with Franklin and Lamar having to chase down this guy on a motorcycle. This part doesn't make that much sense that Vagos is long gone, so obviously it's not realistic, but I don't mind it here because it's still fun catching up to the guy and learning how to shoot from a vehicle. But really, the purpose of this mission is to illustrate where Franklin and Lamar are in life. Franklin talks about wanting things to change, but Lamar has a very different idea of what going legit means. Alright man, look, we go in quiet, in and out, no f drum. I'll try homie, but I'm one loud, dramatic, brass, crazy, greedy, shoot a mother back type mother Wow, Lamar doesn't know himself at all because he's more of a shoot a mother in the face type of mother. Now there's more character stuff here at the end of the mission, but I'm going to talk about all of that when I'm done talking about the gameplay of these missions and what phenomenal gameplay we get in the next mission, Pulling Favors, which is the introduction to the Strangers and Freaks side missions. In this mission, Franklin tows a car for his old friend Tanya and her crackhead boyfriend JB. Now I was half joking when I called it phenomenal gameplay. I mean, it's obviously not phenomenal. It's pretty bad, but it's not bad. I actually enjoy slowing the pace down exploring a little bit of the city while learning a little bit about Franklin. This one should be easy. Shit, not easy enough for JB to drag his ass out of whatever crack house he laying in. His loss, yo gain, sugar. Except I ain't gaining shit, sugar. Move that seat back and you know I'll make it right for you. That ain't what I'm saying. Damn, Tanya, what the f happened to you? Gameplay-wise, pulling favors probably wouldn't be so hated if it was a one-off mission, but since there are like four identical towing missions in Tanya's mission chain, no one really appreciates it. But perhaps I appreciate it too much because it precedes Chop, which is absolute rubbish when it comes to gameplay. This mission is supposed to be the reintroduction of Balas vs. Grove Street, but it takes place nowhere near the hood and is up in Vinewood, which hits on my whole thing of they don't gradually introduce you to the map in GTA 5, and they also choose not to introduce you to a new type of car chase here because this is the second car chase we've had in the game, and it's the second time you're chasing a guy on a motorcycle with a slower vehicle. And while I like the one in Repossession, this one is laughable because it makes zero sense for this van to keep up with that bike, no matter how much Lamar demands Franklin use his special ability. You got sloppy, homie. Where that laser sight shit at? What's with Lamar saying this? That would be like me saying, hey, you're getting sloppy, homie. Where's that slow motion video at? <laughs> the chase itself does eventually get interesting as we have to speed through this alley. And the scripted moment of this guy who I'm forgetting his name, him getting hit by the bus, that part is great. The foot chase, well, this is basically the tutorial for climbing and running, which is fine but it's also a tutorial for sliding across a car hood, something that in 10 years of playing this game, I've probably done like three times when not in this mission. And then we break through this wooden barrier, which would be cool if you could actually do it in the open world or any time else, but that is not in the cards. What is in the cards is this ridiculous segment where you are told to switch control to chop. So conceptually, this is great. Yeah, give me control of a dog, I'm in. But the thing is, even though this looks like the same character switching mechanic you did in the prologue, you're not actually in control of Chop. You're just looking at his point of view. So every time I've played this mission before, I'm always like, why does Chop control like complete ass? Now shame on me for not realizing this sooner, but other than it switching to first person, there isn't any indication that this character swap should work any differently from this character swap. Plus, I think this part is only here because Rockstar just couldn't help it with their juvenile humor. Like, they are hilarious when they are really on, but this is the first example of when they just go for the easy laugh. And it's frustrating because they have it in them during this mission. Basically, every moment involving Lamar is pure comedic gold. Shit, hey, Lamar Davis, is that you? No we going back to your crib? I've been there when you was in diapers. Shut up, man. You ain't recognize me. I knew it was you before you took that flag off. You always been dumb, Lamar. All of this leads naturally to complications, which is the best mission of the bunch. And that's purely for the payoff of Franklin meeting Michael in a really clever way. But the first half of the mission is kind of dull. Franklin has repossessed Jimmy's car from Michael's house. And so we get this stealth tutorial so that Franklin can get the drop on this landscaper and make his way through Michael's annoying household. You're a waste of semen, bitch. Penises are not meant to be that small. I know, right? I've seen enough of them. He's got great hips. You know that? Follow through. 
yeah, I could get used to this. <laughs> this stealth sequence does a good job of showing us why Michael is miserable in his life, but as a gameplay mechanic, does anyone actually think GTA 5 has fun stealth? But everything in this mission is there to get to that first meeting between Franklin and Michael. And man, I get chills at how genuinely creative this is. That's a 9mm semi-automatic pushed against your skull. Huh? Look around. And what really makes this moment memorable is that this is essentially Michael having a midlife crisis, and that being the genesis of this big moment in a GTA mission. It's like unprecedented for these games. The only problem is it happens too quickly. By reintroducing Michael just five missions into the game, it absolutely shortchanges Franklin. Like Franklin's introduction is very muted compared to Michael's fascinating betrayal in the prologue and his utter meltdown in therapy. Basically, Michael is super interesting and Franklin has a lot of ground to cover to get me engaged in his character. Unfortunately, over the course of these five missions, we barely get a sense of who Franklin is. Every time he brings up his motivations in this part of the game, it feels like the game only goes very surface level. Man, get your stupid ass on. Damn, why would you ask him if he knows the f on? Or better yet, do some skywriting and reads there's a couple of about to boost some cars in case somebody didn't realize. See, what you don't realize is we ain't boosting. This shit is legit business. Legit? Oh yeah, I forgot, huh? 401ks, tax returns and all? Yeah, right. You the one all pumped up on doing this lick I'm getting my money in the hood. I'm straight, fool. I'm cool. You cool? Cool what? Slanging dope and throwing up gang signs? Yeah, right. This is well acted and interesting, but it's also written in a way to quickly bring us up to speed about two characters who are already in the middle of something, and thus we miss a ton of character beats. Franklin wants to go legit, but we're never actually there with him. We don't meet Franklin until well after he's made that realization. So we don't actually know that version of Franklin. Then he gets a job with Simeon, but we don't actually experience the tension of what that would mean for him turning his back on the hood and on his friends. And then Franklin realizes that working for Simeon is actually not legit, but we don't actually feel that either, so we don't get to experience him becoming disillusioned. And that's a fundamental problem with Franklin's story. The game glosses over any emotional beats from him. Lamar breaks it to him that the reason Simeon hired them is because of their gangbanging past, and Franklin basically has no reaction at all. I don't want no unnecessary bullshit here, all right? I don't give a shit. There's a reason Simeon pays a couple of mean looking motherfuckers to come repo this shit. We ain't Girl Scouts. In your case, I ain't so sure about that. So character development put on hold so we can talk some shit to Lamar. In other times, Franklin threatens to show some personality and make himself interesting, but then minor characters like Simeon hijack the entire scene. Look man, it's been a real honor, homie. But I gotta move forward in my life. It seems like all I do is let people tell me what to do and I do it and nothing changes. I tell you what, my boy. You tell me exactly what you want and I will very carefully explain to you why it cannot be. What? Today is repossessing vehicles that fools have purchased at exorbitant interest rates. But tomorrow, together, I never had a black son. But if I did, I want him to be just like you. Now your mileage may vary on whether that line was actually funny. I think it was pretty bad. I think it's trying too hard. I do think this Lamar part is hilarious, but that's not the point. The point is that by shifting focus to comedy, it completely undermines Franklin's character development. Like it robs him of any chance of being developed or of being interesting. And this happens repeatedly in these missions. At the end of Repossession, Franklin and Lamar have this great conflict. You a psychopath. You done finally lost it. That's that Apache blood in me, homie. You ain't lucky I ain't do a flying tomahawk and scalp they mother ass. We can't repo the assets of a dead man, big sitting chief asshole. And we ain't going to neither. Keep this mother for myself. Tell Simeon we couldn't recover. You tell him, you moron. So this is good dramatic tension. Franklin and Lamar are at each other's necks and they just stole a bike from their employer. And I know Franklin doesn't actually care about this job, but still, he's trying to go legit. This is the opposite of going legit. So I wanna see and feel Franklin actually working through that conflict, but we don't get that. He and Lamar continue to butt heads and chop, but it has nothing to do with their work for Simeon. And because the game doesn't show Franklin feeling anything, I don't feel anything when the next time we see Simeon, he's threatening to fire Franklin, and then Franklin's driving through Simeon's dealership, ending any chance at his going legit. That is rushed character development, and we never get any inkling about how Franklin feels about this. 
See, I wish this part was actually twice as long. I would have liked to have seen Franklin working for Simeon from the start by himself, where he's just doing regular repo missions. Then he brings Lamar in because he wants to help out his friend. Lamar starts escalating things because he's Lamar freaking Davis. Shut up, man. You ain't recognize me. And that way we'd get to see them being friends first and then see this conflict brewing between the two of them. But instead, the game literally opens up with Franklin and Lamar already in conflict, and we never see them not in conflict, at least in this opening act of the game. I can't remember what happens later in the game. It gets tiring, but the game never takes the time to elaborate on it. It instead prioritizes humor over drama, and admittedly, Lamar is freaking hilarious. Dog. Franklin here has been awarded Employee of the Month. You f***ing with me, right? Man, we both being with dog. Man, knock it off, man. For real, after all the mother I put in, man. Man, f this employee of the month shit, homie. I'm sitting up here trying what to get What you mean, us f this employee of the month shit, man? When it's some shit to be won, goddammit, I want it. I don't give a f what it is. You know what I'm talking about? I take no prisoners. I go hard doing this shit. Big dog, big nuts. When names is on the motherfucking board, I want to see my name at the top of that mother and next to it, it needs to say, winner. <laughs> this rambling diatribe from Lamar is hysterical and imminently rewatchable. But by not giving the actual conflict between Franklin and Lamar time to breathe, and giving Lamar such a larger-than-life personality, you know who suffers? <laughs> Shit, Franklin Clinton. Shit, your ass must be high or something. No, I'm not high. Franklin just comes off so miserable. It's like he never cracks a smile in the opening, which could have been interesting if they developed his character somewhat. But without doing that, why am I stuck with this guy? And the thing is, you are stuck with him because he's one third of the protagonist and I just don't care when I'm playing as him. Basically, Rockstar has a severe lack of focus when it comes to Franklin. His entire thing is going legit to get out of the gang life. So how can we only get one true gang-centric mission before Franklin meets Michael, aka his way out of this life? And yes, we have the long stretch mission, but that's after meeting Michael and can be played way later in the game. Again, not enough focus on Franklin's motivations. And that lack of focus infects everyone around him. Lamar is hilarious, but the only other character traits he has are that he's an idiot, and then he magically shrinks and distorts. Around the block with Chop, you need to walk with your fat ass. Yeah, okay, you tall, linky son of a bitch. Other characters are handled even worse. Simeon could have been an interesting foil for Franklin, but instead, he's just a walking caricature who says lines that even walking caricatures wouldn't say. Today is repossessing vehicles that fools have purchased at exorbitant interest rates. Some kid, he is already late on his payments, and I have this bad feeling that he will do more damage to the car than we can get back from him in the exorbitant interest rate payments. Huh? Even walking caricatures can use some subtlety and not call attention to those things they are caricaturizing, but Rockstar is not interested in being subtle with some of these characters. If they were, we would have had more interactions between Franklin and his Aunt Denise, another relationship that was ripe for drama, but gets reduced to nothing but uninspired humor. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, girl. Whew, hey, how much further? We ain't even going five yards yet. Okay. I just don't like this style of humor in a GTA game. That's a joke that worked for Homer Simpson in The Simpsons. All right, Homer, let's see the left. <clears throat> okay, let's see the right. <laughs> just a second. When you're ready. All right. This kind of humor worked in the earlier, more cartoony GTA games. Am I gonna get to play with your big ends again? I'll be with you in a minute, Spark Plug. But in GTA 5, it just comes off as completely lazy. Somehow the most interesting non-Lamar character here is Tanya, who is over the top, but also a way to actually experience Franklin's conflict of turning his back on his friends and family. The f is wrong with you, Tanya? Ain't nothing wrong with me, shit. Well, your ass don't look too good. Where the f is JB? Smoking. And what about you? I mean, you know, I quit. You know what I'm saying? Almost. Yeah, whatever. JB, look, JB gonna lose everything. He gonna lose the house, you know what I'm saying? The business, everything, and you his cousin. You said you was gonna he help. He ain't my cousin. Now this is not award-winning or amazing character development, but the reason it works in pulling favors in a way that it doesn't in other missions is that this mission is not trying to move the plot. The main missions, though, are in such a rush to get us to Michael and Franklin working together that they ignore things that can hold the story together. And at times, it doesn't even make any sense. Check out this cutscene here. Excuse like me. That. Wait. That oh, wait, boy. I, I, I am his mentor. I am so proud of you. And then literally 40 seconds after this conversation, Simeon calls with a completely different attitude and tone of voice. 
Hey, did you change your mind? When I discover that you betray me, perhaps. I hear you took the bike for yourself, my employee of the month. Listen, man, me and Lamar was gonna get that back to you, dawg. Oh, I am sure. You will get this car off the daddy's boy, and then we talk. Clearly something was wrong here. It feels like there was probably more missions designed and they had this line in another mission and they just threw it in here because they're like, oh crap, we need to have something that drives a wedge between Franklin and Simeon. But did we really need it? Because later in this mission, Franklin drives a car through Simeon's storefront. Stupid dogs. But I'm sorry, my dogs aren't stupid because they must have seen Michael walking outside of my house. That's how Rockstar treats him. They have serious separation anxiety when Michael's not around, and Franklin's characterization is a casualty of that anxiety. But can you blame them? We had that great story hook in the prologue, and the mission Franklin and Lamar actually opens up with this brilliant Michael meltdown. And where did these opportunities get you, Michael? They got me right here. The end of the road with a big house and a useless kid, and I'm stuck talking to you because no one else gives a shit. Oh, I'm living a dream, baby. And that dream is f***ed. It is f***ing f***ed. For all the crap I've given Rockstar for how they introduced Franklin, they have no such issues with Michael. We saw his betrayal of Trevor in the prologue, which was the plot hook, but the character hook is how this guy is this combination of unrelenting anger at the world and depression, all in the shape of an out of shape retired middle-aged dude. And when Franklin meets him, Michael is just raring to have a midlife crisis, which comes in the form of him having Franklin smashed through the dealership. But there's also hints of the narcissism and hypocrisy that are hallmarks of Michael's character when he confronts Simeon. Did he agree to have some punk break into my f***ing house? I, I thought no, I... That kid might be a idiot, but you are a fraudulent scumbag piece of shit. Fraudulent scumbag piece of shit is definitely a true statement, but this is coming from a guy who faked his death and screwed over his own friends. And hypocrisy is plastered all over Michael during therapy. Your son, James, he's a good kid. He's a good kid? A, a good kid. Why? Does he help the poor? No. He sits on his ass all day, smoking dope and jerking off while he plays that game. And what about you? I don't have the advantages that kid has. By the time I was his age, I'd already been in prison twice. I robbed banks. I ran whores. I smuggled dope. And you consider them achievements? These were the opportunities I had. At least I took them. Yeah, so Michael's a really well-realized character, and it's clear from this opening that Rockstar didn't have confidence that Franklin could support the story without Michael. When the game was being promoted pre-release, they talked about how Michael was basically a look at a GTA protagonist who had essentially beaten his own game and had nothing more to do. Trevor was a GTA protagonist at their most psychopathic, and Franklin was supposed to be the traditional rags to riches GTA protagonist. But my guess is that Michael was the genesis for GTA 5, and then they were like, okay, we could do Trevor, and Trevor is really easy because he's just insane, and they can be super creative with him. But then they're like, let's have a third character. And then they're like, oh crap, this is so boring. I don't know what to do with this guy. So they did nothing with him. I don't say that to be overly negative on Franklin. I think the vocal performance is great and I do think his character gets more interesting as the game goes on. But I also think he needed a beefy set of early missions to really get me to care about him. And I think Rockstar was so scarred from some of the negative reactions of GTA 4's slow burn of an opening that the pacing of GTA 5's opening is just too rushed. And for the rest of the game, Franklin is playing catch up and I'm not sure he ever quite does catch up. And that's just really sad. But you know what's also sad? This video is 25 minutes long. It took me forever to make. And I plan on making more videos for GTA 5. I want to do GTA 4, I want to do GTA 3, GTA Vice City and San Andreas. <sighs> the only thing that might keep me going is you liking and subscribing to my channel. I don't know why you wouldn't. Maybe you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got. Eh. That sounded like a legitimate reason. I mean, I am balding.